it's Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy and ascension forecast for Sunday, September 29th to Saturday, October 5th. Okay, so last week we were wrapping up the last full week of September, which of course had its own major life lessons, its own topics and themes. And if you want to go back and take a listen to that September energy forecast intro that I put out over a month ago, just to see how your September kind of lined up with the energies, I'm definitely going to recommend that you do that just that. We walked through that equinox gateway. Of course, when the sun shifted into Libra season, the equinox was triggered. That was equal day to equal night, but many of us didn't feel very balanced, very peaceful, very harmonious, if you will. And a lot of that was because this equinox got kind of blinded out, if you will, by that eclipse energy that we're still very much in. Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, she left her rulership in Libra and energy as she took over rulership over the entirety of Libra season. Venus did a deep dive into Scorpio energy also on the 22nd. This is the reason why we've been having a lot of heart activations, why a lot of relationship dynamics have popped off and shit has hit the fan apparently. We're going through a major change, major transformation of this heart space of what we actually value, what we actually want to build, to create, to actually have a part of our day-to-day lives. It is very intense, very dark, very probing at this particular point in time. And we're still going to dabble into some heart activations this week as we move through the new moon solar eclipse in Libra energy. Before I get too ahead of myself, we also had the last quarter moon pop off in Cancer energy on the 24th. And of course, the moon is in her rulership over Cancer energy. The last quarter moon of any moon phase is about looking back, about seeing where it is that we're at, what is working, what isn't working, coming to a certain term of peace, acceptance, and harmony with certain situations and circumstances. And where it is that, again, there's this extra effort to wrap things up bring it to a completion point so that we can definitely move on. And on the 26th, we had Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves. Mercury moved out of his rulership in Virgo energy and now is in Libra energy. Of course, that's going to give us an opportunity to kind of move into some light, fluffy vibes in our headspace. We're trying to see both sides of the coin, trying to see situations and circumstances from all angles before we make any major decisions. But we're also hella indecisive. We're on the fence about a lot of things and we're lacking a lot of information and details because we're in eclipse season and that is definitely triggering and activating the back and forth cha-cha-cha between the scales of our heart and of our head. So this week, we are moving into October. October carries the vibration of one, and that is going to be an interesting dynamic for us to boss up, step up, step out with this new version of self. The major changes, the major transformations going on in our inner realms, definitely going to have an opportunity to come out to play. October giving us the vibration of one is also going to help us with new beginnings, initiating a new path, a new direction that is definitely more oriented to our own wants, needs, and desires. And of course, while blending this particular energy with Libra season, the vibration of seven, we are going to see a major change, major transformation in our relationship dynamics in order to set us free, give us a little bit more independence, a little bit more time, energy, and space to get to know thyself. And of course, with the soul contracts, up for renewal, up for termination, up for initiation under that full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces that we just had, the new moon solar eclipse in Libra that we will be having here on the second, probably going to give us some interesting facts, some interesting details on what it is that we need to do, especially in our relationship dynamics to bring the scales back into balance. So there's definitely going to be a lot of energy fluctuations coming at us here this week. Before I jump into all of the ascension symptoms, I just want to check a couple of things off of my homework list. First of all, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for liking, for sharing, for commenting, for dropping beautiful emojis in the comment section below, making it a very aesthetically pleasing type of channel to be kind of pushing through. 
Um, I feel like, you know, we're in Libra season where Libra season, everybody just wants to see the beauty. And we're definitely seeing the beauty in this beautiful community of ours with all of those hearts and all of those stars and all of the beautiful emojis that you all are leaving. So I want to thank you very much for that. I also want to thank you for your patience, for your understanding. If you're tuning in live in the chat, first of all, I want to thank you for being here on a Saturday. Typically speaking, we do these live chats, these Ascension forecasts on Friday evenings. I had a day, y'all. I had a day. Things are just not going the way that I had hoped. They're not going the way that I have planned. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. Um, for those of you that have been with me for a while, you know that I suffer with my voice, okay? So this dates back to my near-death experience. I had a lot of trauma with my vocal cords. You know, I was in a coma for close to two weeks. They tried to, to intubate me at that particular time in an emergency surgery situation, actually three times. Um, and in the process of intubation, they did kind of, you know, rupture. They did scar. They did hurt. My vocal cords, it's something that I've been struggling with now for 15 years. And for the most part, I do okay. However, um, at the end of the month, because I put way too much on my plate every freaking month, I found myself in a situation this month where my body was just like, you know what, girl, you're going to have to take a step back. And here's why. At the end of every month, I spend close to four and a half, five hours recording all of the Zodiac forecast for the month ahead. And that absolutely does a number on my vocal cords. On top of the normal, you know, recordings that I do for these daily vibes and these energy forecasts and these ascension forecasts as well. I also have, you know, my one-on-one -on -one clients that require my voice. And this month, my voice just is not having it. It pushed me into a situation where I had to realize how stubborn I have been in the past of not changing the way that I do things. So after 15 years of presenting the Zodiac forecast each and every single month through an audio forecast, this time in October, this month, things have to change, meaning... You will not see the Zodiac forecast in audio form coming at you for the month of October. Instead, what I had to do is I had to kind of wave my white flag. I had to declare defeat, if you will, and I had to kind of take on a different format. So for October, in order to get your Zodiac forecast, it will be in written form. I made it in a 30 page kind of workbook. I kind of amalgamated the uh, Zodiac forecast, I amalgamated the e, the e guides for the Zodiac season, and some of the moon guide topics and themes I put in there as well. So basically what I'm getting at is now you can download those particular workbooks according to your Zodiac sign, and they have all the information, all the resources that you need to get through your month. It's going to tell you all of the different astro events, where it's taking place in your chart, what that actually means for you. There's some journal prompts in there in order to do the shadow work. And I'm thinking, hopefully, it's going to go over well, although I know I can't keep everyone happy. I've learned the hard way over the last couple of weeks of bringing this new aesthetic to the forefront that not everybody is happy with the changes that I make. But guess what? I'm not happy with being sick every month. I'm not being too happy with the pain going on in my throat. I'm not happy with the migraines that I get. I'm not happy with constantly putting myself at a disadvantage, a disservice for this, you know, this spiritual stuff that I have created. I know I've created this particular, let's call it medium. I know that I have created certain resources and I know that I've been doing them for 15 years. And yes, I know I'm a little bit bored of it myself. But my voice can no longer take the amount of work that I've been putting on it, which is forcing me to be a little bit creative, come up with different ways to still get the information across without me having to go through the physical discomfort each and every single month in order to deliver that information to you. So a lot of the reason why yesterday's Ascension forecast didn't happen, not because I didn't record it, I did Although it took me many, many edits, I recorded it, but it sounded so freaking awful. It sounded so bad that I couldn't bring myself to post it. So I've been drinking throat coat tea. Amazing. 
I've been sucking on lozenges. I've been using my numbing spray like I've been using, you know, for many, many years now in order to get me through the end of the month, every freaking month. And here I am this morning. I am giving it a go. I am getting this recording out while my vocal cords are still, you know, alive and well. We'll see what the rest of the day brings. That being said, there are going to be some changes in my delivering of information moving forward. And especially on my Patreon, I want to get back to doing astro classes and podcasts that I've kind of stepped away from over this last couple of months of this healing chapter that I've been in. But I want to get back to that. And in order for me to get back to doing the things that I actually enjoy means that I have to kind of turn the volume down in a lot of ways on the amount of time that I'm actually spending recording using my voice. So that means that I have to kind of weigh the pros and cons. We're in labor season, so I thought it was a good time to do that. Weigh the pros and cons about, you know, what actually demands my voice be present for and what it does not. And unfortunately, or slash fortunately for me, um, I'm hoping that this new method of giving you your, you know, monthly Zodiac forecast in a written form in a workbook lip form, not only going to help save my voice and help me be able to pour into other content that hopefully will be just as helpful in different ways, but will also help you guys to stay on track, having everything in front of you, being able to kind of keep up with the astro events and not having to download this and that and this and that too many things going on I'm getting burnt out here so I am changing things up and another reason not that I'm saying I'm I'm sticking to Saturdays for my ascension forecast but switching things up had a little bit of a mini meltdown here yesterday I am a fixed sign I do resist change at all costs even though I know it's better for me to switch things up Um, so, you know, had a little bit of a mini meltdown here yesterday, just was not able to kind of, you know, put out and produce the kind of Ascension forecast that I normally do. Thus, why I postponed it to today. And I just want to thank you so much for your patience, for your understanding and for being here in the live chat or catching the replay. So with that being said, I just just want to kind of put out there as well that my calendar is now available open for the appointment for October that is available to my Patreons first and foremost. It will go public and be available to everyone on October 1st. Okay, with all of that out of the way, I'm going to probably quickly move through some of these ascension symptoms before my voice craps out on me again. Okay, so I just want to remind everybody, you're not losing your mind. You're not crazy. It's eclipse season. Okay, shit isn't hitting the fan. You're not losing anything. Things are being removed from you because you failed to remove them from your own damn self. We are in the middle of this eclipse corridor that takes place between the first eclipse event, which of course we've already had full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces energy, September 17th. And we have this upcoming new moon solar eclipse in Libra energy here on the second. There is a whole astro class for this particular event that will be launching live on my Patreon uh, September 30th, so Monday afternoon. If you want to join in over there, I would definitely recommend you do that as well. We're going to do a deep dive in closing out the karmic chapter that we've been working on in this Aries and Libra and Axis. But we're smack dab in the middle of these eclipse events right now. And this means that people think they're going cray cray. We're hypersensitive to energies. We have karmic contracts coming up for renewal. We have shit hitting the fan. We have relationship dynamics popping off because, of course, the soul contracts got triggered and activated under the lunar eclipse energy. We still don't have all the information. We still don't have all the details. We still don't actually have the plans that we want to have to actually move on and move forward. But the new moon, solar eclipse, and Libra energy will be adding something to our lives, probably the information and details that we're currently lacking on how it is that we're going to come to a certain term of acceptance with situations that have popped off, how it is that we are going to kind of, you know, try to bring new balance into our lives. It probably won't be realized right away. We're going to need to kind of, you know, be post eclipse energy in order for us to make sense of a lot of the things that aren't making sense now. But I just wanted to remind you that eclipse season is never easy. It's never fun. It's quite exhausting. And the heart activations that we've been having is a part of the grieving process of us letting go of a lot of people, places and things that meant something to us, meant a lot to us as far as the old version of self goes, the old realm and reality goes. 
windows that this new version of self has no connection to. Thus, why there is this releasing, this ending, this completion, this closure point that we're all working through. So if you feel like you're going cray cray, congratulations, you're exactly where it is that you need to be. If you're as confused as all F on what you're doing, who you are, where you're going, what you want to do from here, congratulations, you're exactly where it is that you want to be. These heart activations, though, they're going to continue. And I don't know about y'all, but I had severe anxiety for like three days this past week to the point where I literally could not breathe. I think a lot of that is just due to me pushing my body to do things that it's not comfortable in doing as well. But again, that illuminates in Libra season where it is that the scales aren't balanced in life. Not saying that it has to manifest in the same situations and circumstances for you. But I know in my own life, I've definitely been living in extremes. I've definitely been neglecting certain areas of my life. And this Libra season, this eclipse energy is bringing full stop attention to those particular areas. And instead of me sitting here and crying and banging my head against a wall, which technically I did do yesterday, um, I'm not doing that again here today. If you are banging your head against a wall, then it's time to give your head a shake and stop doing that and think outside of the box. Now, I know we can only put our mental plane into so many different pressurized situations to come up with the facts, the details, the plan, the strategy to kind of move on, move forward. We're not able to think clearly right now. That's not what we're doing. OK, when we talk about thinking, we're talking about Mercury, Mercury's in Libra energy. And again, we're trying to stay in the shallow end because we don't really want to dive into the deep end of our thoughts. We're trying to gather information. We're trying to gather perspectives. We're trying to gather um, I'm going to say different lenses for us to kind of be looking at our situation and circumstance through. We don't have all the puzzle pieces and there's this element where there's so much going on in our inner realm, the change of mind, the change of heart, that we're going to great lengths in order to mask all of the changes going on because we're not really prepared to do what we need to do if we vocalize those particular wants, needs, and desires, those revelations, those realizations, those particular concerns. There's going to be a lot of aftermath coming at us post-eclipse season. And right now, we just need to hunker down. We have to try and get our mind right, have to try and get our heart right. We have to try and stay in alignment here because, again, we're in the... I'm going to call it the element of confusion. That's what eclipse season is all about. We will gain that clarity, but it ain't coming to us today. So the heart activations are going to continue. Let's thank Venus for that. She's in the Scorpio energy doing the shadow work to unpack her past pain, her past trauma around her heart space. The walls, the guards that she's built up due to that past pain and trauma. We have some emotional baggage that we need to unpack. We need to do a deep dive and realize where our values are changing, where our priorities are changing, where the people in our lives are changing. Because again, Venus is very connected to relationship dynamics as well. But the Scorpio energy is deep, it's dark, it's probing, it's intense. We have to realize what our deepest, darkest fears are. We have to realize what our pain and trauma is actually doing for us in this present moment. And we have to do the shadow work to get real and raw and vulnerable with ourselves to actually face it. That's how we change. That's how we transform. And the Scorpio energy being about transformation has to take place in the emotional and spiritual realm first. So heart activations can manifest in a couple of different ways. Yep, anxiety is definitely a thing. Feeling like you can't breathe, definitely a thing. We are in an air season, in Libra season. So it, it's kind of an oxymoronic thing to think that we're in an air season, but it, we also feel like we can't get enough air in our lungs. Um, breath work, major, major practice that we all need to be leaning into, especially when these energies are so wackadoodle, where meditation doesn't help. You know, the normal things that you try to do to calm yourself just don't help because technically speaking, it's not all your energy. You're picking up on the collective. This is like a washer machine of energies in the eclipse corridor. And so we're picking up on a lot of things that don't even belong to us. We don't know how to kind of transmute it in the correct way. We don't know how to transform it into something better. And so it gets stuck in our physical bodies. Now, this may manifest in maybe your heart rhythm, skipping a beat. Maybe you can just feel your heart trying to beat out of your chest. Maybe we're going to have some situations of acid reflux. I know that we are going through a major change of our solar plexus right now, which is located right underneath our rib cage. That could be indigestion. That could be gas bubbles coming up or coming out the other way. 
let's just be frank about that. Or it could just be, you know, this overall feeling that, you know, you want to puke. Let's be real about it. We are in some choppy ass energy right now, and it feels very much like we're on a boat and we're ready to get seasick. We have been trying to achieve balance while this ship, so to speak, has been tossed from one side to the other. We have sea legs, okay? Our legs are not strong. They are not stable. We do not feel stabilized in our physical realm. We do not feel stabilized in our mental or emotional realm. And our legs are manifesting that particular energy. We do tend to hold on to fear, store that fear in our knees in our ankles. We are experiencing cold feet, mostly because again, we need to take a step forward, but we have no clue what that step actually is. Many of us sitting around wanting to know what the next step and the next step and the next step is actually going to look like when realistically, we have to become more and more comfortable with taking a step into the unknown, which doesn't feel good for a whole hell of a lot of people. These sea legs are definitely giving us a good go because we're feeling dizzy anyways. There's a lot of air, there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of euphoria popping off. It feels very much like we are going through such a major change, a major transformation in our inner realm where different thoughts, different ideas, different emotions are popping up that it's skewing our perspective of the outside world, which technically speaking hasn't changed a whole lot. You may receive information that makes you kind of look at the people in your lives a little bit differently. You may be having a change of heart within yourself that again, kind of skewing the lens that you've been looking through. But realistically speaking, the physical realm hasn't really morphed, hasn't really changed, hasn't really transformed. It's our inner realm that is rapidly going through this process of change and transformation. That's where the change and transformation has to happen first and foremost is our inner realm. But the way that we are thinking, the way that we are feeling it's so confusing. It's so disorienting that we are, we kind of feel like we are swirling. You know, if we are in this washer machine of cosmic energies because of the eclipse corridor that we're in, we feel like we are being tossed around, tossed around to the point where we're starting to get a little bit stomach sick, adding to again, that seasickness that we are experiencing that pressure underneath our rib cage, the discontent in our gut, you know, the nervousness that we feel, the worry that we feel, the uncertainty that we feel, all really affecting the central nervous system. And of course, there's so many nerves in the digestive tract that, of course, it's going to feel like we need to puke up things and put it overboard. Now, that being said, there's a lot of head pressure. Now, this can be head pressure without dizziness. This can be head pressure without the euphoria. It's literally, it feels like our head is in a vice grip because we're trying to make sense of things that aren't ever going to make sense. And what I mean by that is that our ego cells relies on our intellect of the mental plane to bring information in from our exterior realm in order to form thoughts and opinions. And right now, again, there's not a whole lot going on in the external realm. All of these realizations, all of this change of mind, all of this change of heart is in our inner realm. And it just happened. You know, we can't make intellectual, practical, logical sense of it. It's not meant to be made sense of. Again, we just had a full moon, lunar eclipse and Pisces energy. You can't put your finger on anything in Pisces energy. It's a feeling. It's a intuitive insight. It is a karmic situation and we will never make sense of karma. We will never make sense of energies in the way that our brain wants us to. So the head pressure is because we're overanalyzing, we're overthinking, we're trying to come up with a plan, with a path, with a strategy on how to get us out of current situations and circumstances. We're trying to build on the plan, the path, the strategy for us to move on and move forward. But again, we're lacking the information in details. We're in eclipse season. We're not going to gain that information in details until the weeks to come. So the head pressure is actually making us feel like our, our, a bobblehead. Our head is separate from our body right now. We are in an air season, Libra season. We are in a cardinal air season, which means that it is time to make a change. It is time to initiate a new path. But again, we're on the fence about it because we're hella indecisive in this Libra energy. We know that it's coming. We know that a pivot point is about to happen. This is why many of us are feeling like we're on edge. We can feel a major change, major event coming at us. We just don't know what it is. And our mental plane, our logical, practical, 
physical mental plane, trying to overanalyze things that aren't even there, trying to make sense of things that don't even really exist here in the tangible world. So give yourself just a little bit of a break. Now, when I say that most of this energy is being kind of focused in on the ever changing landscapes of our relationship dynamics, when I say to you that from the full moon, lunar eclipse and Pisces, even to up to this point, and again, we still haven't dove into that new moon, solar eclipse and Libra energy as of yet, where we're at, there are relationship dynamics that are falling apart, okay? If you are quote unquote losing someone, please recognize the fact that you are not losing anything. Who or what, whoever or whatever is being quote unquote removed from your life at this point, is not meant for you for this next karmic chapter. You weren't about to remove them, so the universe stepped in and removed them for you. I have had more, I'm gonna say, topics and themes of cheating, of betrayal, of secret lives, secret identities, now coming to the forefront in these relationship dynamics, leaving people not even knowing what to do with this information. Because again, you may be presented with some information of loss, of ever-changing landscapes where the energy exchange and relationship dynamics are concerned, but you don't have the whole story. You don't see the full picture. And so for you to come up with a solution to a lot of the half-assed information that you were currently presented with, you're really just going to be continuing to bang your head against the wall until you have a bigger scope of the information, the situation, the circumstance that you only have like one little breadcrumb of at this particular juncture. More of that information is going to come streaming in once we get through this new moon, solar eclipse and labor energy, because that's going to provide us with the insight, the information, the details in order to bring peace and harmony and balance back into our lives, especially where relationship dynamics are concerned. But again, as I previously mentioned with the full moon lunar eclipse and Pisces energy, that was soul contracts coming up for renewal. Some of them are getting terminated. Some of them are getting voided out. Some of them are getting renewed. Some of them are getting initiated. But none of that is going to be fully realized until after we move out of this eclipse energy. So the headspace being kind of the major, let's call it focus, in Libra season, in this air season, because again, there's a lot of information that we're trying to sort through. We're trying to weigh the pros and cons. We're trying to come up with, you know, a plan, a strategy that again, we're still ill informed about. You may feel, although there is this pressure in the head, you may feel like you have a head cold. There may be stuffiness, maybe in your nose, in your sinuses, maybe you feel congested in your lungs, in your throat, in your headspace. I know, I know that I'm feeling that, although I know that I created that within myself. Um, sometimes we do create situations and circumstances to bring attention to the physical body on where energy is actually trapped and stored in the physical form. And so, you know not saying that everybody manifests it in the same way that I did over these past last couple of days. But I feel like my head is about to explode. I feel like my throat is on fire and it's about to explode. And I know that I have, you know, a past medical history to support why I'm feeling that and it's not all energetically, you know, triggered and activated. It all goes hand in hand. And so you may feel like you're coming down with a cold. You may just have, you know, a good sneezing fit and then have the sniffles for the day. You may have a leaky faucet nose where water just drips, drips, drips out of you. Either way, all of this is just kind of being focused in the headspace right now because we're trying very hard to come up with solutions. We're coming up with what we think are believable statements of understanding for a lot of the situations and circumstances that have popped off as of late. But again, we're not dealing with the full picture. We're not dealing with the full information. You have to find yourself in an okay place with not knowing. Okay. So I'm talking about the mouth area. Um, we're biting our tongue. Okay. We have a lot of realizations. We have a lot of thoughts and feelings that we desperately want to unleash on some people, but we're not ready to do that yet. Why? Because you know how they say you F around, you find out. Well, we're not ready to, we're, we're, we're ready to F around. We're not ready to find out. Meaning a lot of the things that we're holding within us are very important declarations of affection or lack thereof, because again, relationship dynamics are ever changing. But if we were to spew out right now what we think, what how we're feeling, 
that's going to rock the boat. That is going to poke the bear. That is going to put us in a situation, have to now walk the walk and talk the talk, which we're in the year of eight. So unless you're ready to back yourself up with a serious course of action to kind of, you know, stand your ground and stand your boundaries, that's why we're biting our tongue. When we bite our tongue, though, we hold all of that energy in our mouths and we are going to experience that morning breath, those little sweaters on our teeth, especially throughout the new moon solar eclipse in Libra energy. So this is likely going to carry us into probably about Wednesday or Thursday ish. It may feel like you just can't get that pastiness out of your mouth. Now, that being said, you could be biting, literally biting your tongue or biting your lip. You could have sore gums. You could have some, you know, teeth aches, if you will. There's a lot of energy that we are biting and keeping and, and restricting in our mouths. And that can definitely manifest in, you know, throat clearing as well. Hopefully you don't have to have a sore ass throat like me and your vocal cords aren't going to be, you know, torturous to you. I would hope that, you know, nobody else has to go through that. However, it can manifest for each and every single one of us in totally different ways. Um, I also want to talk about the skin irritation as we've been talking about like anything that happens with the skin. So rashes or skin eruptions or, you know, injuries on the skin. There's usually an indicator there that we have to bring our attention to that particular area of our body because there's emotion trapped in that particular part of our physical form. But here's the thing. We're in an air season. We're in eclipse energy. I want you to, again, imagine that we're out on a boat in the middle of the ocean and the ocean is just tossing us from one side to the next. And there's great amount of winds coming from all angles. And that air energy is definitely wind. It's also information. It's also confusion. It's going to feel like we have a wind burn on our face. You may actually see it. Maybe your face is going to be a little bit more red than normal. Maybe it's going to look like, you know, you've been holding your breath or something of the sort. Maybe you're going to break out so badly in your face with acne, with eruptions, with cystic acne, whatever the case may be, that your face just feels overall sore. I feel like most of this energy is going to be kind of focused on the face, maybe even on the neck. I want you to look out for your hands as well. It just feels like we've been, oh, battered by windstorms, battered by rain, if you will. And it just does not feel good. However, we do know that this is helping us to realize where it is that the change of self is taking over, is getting anchored in. And that change of self is going to have a major effect on our appearances. We've been talking about this for many, many months now. We've seen the change in our eyes visibly. We've seen, you know, different age spots, moles, freckles actually move. We've seen how we either recognize ourselves in mirrors or have no idea who the hell is even looking back at us. The changes as we further to anchor in this new version of self are going to be very, very apparent. And I would say that this wind burn sensation, especially on our face, is bringing the attention to our face because, again, we have been running away from facing our reality. A lot of the topics and themes, situations and circumstances throw, getting thrown at us here through eclipse season, we don't want to face, we want to run away from. And so anything that we have to face is going to affect our face. And I feel like it is going to come in redness. It's going to come in tightness. It's going to come in the sensation of feeling like we were in a windstorm and we had some debris kind of hit our face throughout that particular, let's call it whirlwind. I want to talk about the spinal cord for a second. So we may be having some, let's call it lower back pain. We have to consider the fact that the root chakra at the very, very, you know, base of our butt, if you will, that root chakra is our survival programming. And right now, because of the uncertainty that we have, because of the karmic shit show life chapters that are being thrown at us, uncertainty is definitely reigning supreme. And because of that uncertainty, we have the survival programming of our ego conditioning, if you will, stored in our lower back. And our lower back also suggests we, where we do not feel safe, secure, or supported in life. And many of us are going through, you know, multitude of hardships right now where our lower backs are just 
absolutely killing us. It does kind of affect the sciatic nerve going down into the legs. Again, sea legs, we're not feeling safe, we're not feeling secure, we're not feeling stable in our physical bodies, in our current circumstances, and uh, in our mind space trying to figure out, you know, what else is going to be coming at us. But the spinal cord itself, because of it, it does house the 33 vertebrae, which essentially is Jacob's ladder. That's what they talked about, trying to release the Kundalini energies to go all the way up your spine, hit your pineal gland, release the milk and honey, that serum that is going to drip down um, your spine and basically plant a brand new seed in your sacral plexus for the next cycle. And so we're going through a huge level of awakenings right now. And that's why many people are feeling disoriented and confused. That's why a lot of this shit hits the fan in eclipse season to kind of beat you down, make you a little bit more open and vulnerable, uh, get you to the point where you're just like not even reacting to the shit storm being thrown at you. A lot of that is because we are going through a level up. We're going through an awakening of sorts. We're reaching new levels of awareness, new levels of consciousness. We're seeing things from a different set of eyes. And because of that, your back is definitely wanting to be cracked at different you know, parts of the back. If you're experiencing it at your shoulder and neck area, it's because you are carrying the emotional weight and baggage of other people on your shoulders. If it's between your shoulder blades, technically that is a heart activation, but it's a heart activation trying to release pain and trauma of the past. If you find it in your, I'm going to say lower back, but just below the rib cage, that is a hard time digesting a lot of information, a lot of details that have been thrown at you over the course of these last couple of months. Either way, you want to make sure that you're stretching, you want to be flexible, you want to crack that back when you can, because that releases the energetic blockage that of course is creating the ascension symptoms that are manifesting in the physical form due to the ever changing energetic landscape. The last thing that I'm going to talk about, guys, is our eyes. Now, I know I talked about this before, but our vision is changing. Our clarity is changing. Yes, we are confused as F. Yes, we don't have all the information available to us. Yes, we're being presented with truths that are still littered with lies. So our eyes are having a hard time adjusting to seeing what is real and what is not. And again, because we're in this eclipse energy, I am going to take this opportunity to also say, if you missed out on the full moon lunar eclipse and Pisces astral class that I presented over on my Patreon, I'm going to recommend that you go listen to that. It's still very applicable. It will be from now until 2027. Um, but that's delusion versus truth and reality. That was that Virgo and Pisces axis. And so we're still sitting in delusion and confusion and moving through the new moon solar eclipse and Pisces or in Libra energy, my apologies, is going to provide us the information because again, air energy in order for us to change our perspective, looking back on all that has taken place and all has transpired and help us see things from a different set of eyes from a different lens. But physically speaking, we're going to see a lot of floaters. We're going to see a lot of orbs. We're going to see a lot of blurriness in our vision because again, we're still out on this boat. There's a windstorm, there's a rainstorm, the waves are crashing upon us, we're trying to keep ourselves upright, the water's in our eyes, our eyes are burning, the wind is at our eyes, our eyes are dried out, we cannot see clearly. And we are going to see some visual disruptions due to that particular energy manifesting in the physical form. So guys, I know that this uh, ascension forecast not only was late by a day, but it's well, half of what it normally is as far as duration goes, but I do apologize for that. I am going to practice a little bit of self-care. I'm going to kind of, you know, wrap it up right now and try to give my voice a little bit of a break. I want to thank you so much for your love, for your support, for your patience, for your understanding. I want to thank you so much for just giving me the time, the energy, the space to do what I need to do in order to present this information with a little bit more energy than I would have had yesterday. It would have been painful, painful, painful for me to make y'all sit through that. So I thank you so much for allowing me the space to kind of delay the Ascension forecast by a day. I thank you so much for tuning in. I'm sending you nothing but love and we'll talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.